Imagine you work at a bookstore. Customers visit your store, ask for a book, and you head to your shelves, checking to see if you have the book. If you find it, you bring it to the customer. But fairly often, a customer will ask for a book that you don't have. You go to your shelves, look for the book, realize you don't have it, and then return to the front desk to let the customer know. You quickly realize that this process of constantly traveling back and forth between your desk and the shelves takes quite a bit of time. Even if your shelves are well organized, traveling to the shelves and back can be inefficient. Ideally, you'd like to only go to the shelves if you actually have the book to give to the customer. If you don't have it, you'd like to determine that without needing to leave your desk. This is a specific instance of the more general problem of checking membership in a set. We have a set of books, and given some book, we'd like to determine if that book is in our set, ideally doing so in a way that's both time and space efficient. One simple solution is to keep a written list of all your books at the front desk. But that's still not so time efficient. As the list gets longer, it'll take more and more time to search it, even if the list is sorted. And it's also not very space efficient. With lots of books, it'll take quite a lot of space to store all of the titles. A more efficient solution to this problem is called a Bloom filter. A Bloom filter is a data structure that consists of an array of bits, where each bit can be turned on or turned off. The bits are numbered, too from 1 up to some maximum value that we choose. We also need a hash function, which in this case is just some mechanism that takes our input, like a book's title, and performs some calculation on it to produce some numeric value, from 1 up to the maximum value in our Bloom filter. Precisely what calculation the hash function performs doesn't matter as much though we do want different books to produce different hash values as much as possible. And importantly, the hash function must be deterministic. Passing in the same title multiple times should give you the same value every time. Now, to populate our Bloom filter, we take each book in the bookstore and pass its title through the hash function. When we get an output, say the number 28, we then take the 28th bit in our Bloom filter and turn that bit on. And now we repeat that process for each of the other books in the bookstore. Now, when a customer asks you for a book, you can first look it up in the Bloom filter. You pass the title into the hash function, take the resulting number, and check to see if that bit is on or off in your Bloom filter. If it's off, you can immediately tell the customer the book's not there, no need to leave your desk. But if the bit is on, there's a good sign that you do have the book, so you can go to the shelves, find the book, and retrieve it. The Bloom filter, while helpful, you soon realize isn't perfect. Sometimes a customer will ask you for a book, you'll look it up in the Bloom filter, and the bit will be on, but when you check the shelves, you realize you don't have the book. How is that possible? Well, this can happen whenever there's a collision. That is, whenever two books have the same value when passed into the hash function. In that case, if one of the books is in your store, you might mistakenly believe that the other book is in your store too, since its hash value will be turned on in your Bloom filter. To reduce this risk, instead of using a single hash function, you can use multiple. You might use three hash functions instead of one, for example. For each book that you own, you'd pass its title into each of the three hash functions and get three values as a result. You'd then turn each of those three bits on in the Bloom filter. And now to check whether a book is in your store, you'd do the same thing pass the title into each of the three hash functions, and check to see whether all three of those bits are turned on in your Bloom filter. If not all three bits are turned on, 
then the book can't possibly be in the store. It's true that even now, you still might have the occasional false positive, but by increasing the number of bits in your bloom filter, or by adjusting your number of hash functions, you can make the probability of a false positive lower and lower. With your bloom filter now at your desk, you find that your job's now much more efficient. When a customer asks for a book, you can usually either quickly tell them that you don't have the book, or you can go to the shelves to retrieve the book for them. What happens, though, when someone buys the last copy of a book in your store? You now need to delete a book from your bloom filter, so that you don't mistakenly claim to have it if asked about it at some point in the future. So we'll leave you with these questions. How would you remove an element from a bloom filter? What might go wrong if you try to do so? And how could you modify this data structure to make deleting elements easier?